it's six o'clock, so we're ready for our next speaker, which is not Juanjo, as, uh, as is mentioned in the, um, in the um, sheet. It's, I wrote it down. I didn't remember it immediately. Jose Manuel Cantera. Am I pronouncing it right? Yes. Okay. But you are from Telefonica. And, uh, you are going to talk about Fireware and how it's an open source platform, yeah. how APIs are going to open up our entire world. Yes. Okay. I'll give, you, uh, I'll give you the floor. Okay. So hello, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, here for presenting uh, Fiverr. Uh, many of you probably have heard uh, before about uh, Fiverr. Um, uh, if I, I, I wanted to start my presentation uh, with a video uh, which explains uh, what is actually Fiverr, but um, unfortunately the network is not working. The video is on YouTube. So I will explain what is Fiverr uh, myself, but of course you can see this video and other videos and more information about Fiverr in our booth, which is uh, just very, very close to the entrance of the, of the expo. So Fiverr uh, basically is an initiative, a big initiative in Europe, uh, and the main target of Fiverr is to create an open platform for the future internet. That is uh, a, very, a very broad term, but uh, that was uh, the term uh, that was given at the time the project started, that was in 2011. So by that time, uh, we didn't have an idea of what was the future internet, but today, Fiverr um, has um, landed the concept of what is the future internet and currently Fiverr, we consider Fiverr as an open platform which allows to build smart applications uh, which exploit the new possibilities, the new capabilities of the internet of things and big data uh, movements. So, um, all, all, as, I, as I have said, uh, Fiverr started in, in 2011 and it was the European Commission, the main promoter of the project. Uh, the European Commission wanted to create uh, uh, an open platform and an ecosystem in Europe that was not so dependent on the, on the usual incumbents of Apple, on uh, Google, uh, Amazon, etc. And they, they told to the, to the main players, the main ICT players in Europe, and they say, we want to do... Uh, we want to do this, and we can do this through uh, what is called a PPP, which is a private, a public-private uh, partnership. So from 2011 till 2016, many things have happened. Many projects have been part of this initiative, but um, the, 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 the two main things of this initiative uh, have been the fiber and now the FICOR projects, and related uh, projects on an acceleration program that I will talk about later. So after this effort of five years, which has been a long journey, uh, what we have right now is that Fiverr is a very relevant open source uh, platform intended for building uh, IoT and smart applications. Um, what kind of smart applications and in what kind of domains? Well, our, our main domain right now and on which we are getting more traction is the smart city domain. So the different verticals in the smart city domain um, are one of our main targets right now. Because Fiverr, as I will explain later, all the components, all the software components which are open source components, right now um, have been um, positioned extremely well and they are very well uh, suited for the problems that arise in smart cities. But not only smart cities, we have as well and they have been, uh, it, it, it have been built different applications as well in the smart agriculture domain and now uh, as well we are trying to position fiber uh, as a platform for developing the concept of Industry 4.2.0 in which factories themselves convert thanks to, thanks to the Internet of Things technologies 
in uh, smart factories which are more efficient in which can be controlled uh, better and they can perform better to create uh, uh, to produce items in a more efficient uh, and effective way and here in 2016 fiber that we consider as the reference open source uh, platform for building IoT and smart applications. Right now, in 2016, Fiverr is empowered by the relevant and vibrant community. So we have right now an open source community. So this, this effort from 2011 till 2016 um, has now, I would say, um, turning, uh, has, has now turned into an, an open source community uh, which is composed by different projects. Uh, all these projects are, as I say, targeted to build these smart applications, to support the smart cities, etc. And now the mission of Fiverr, as you see here, is to build an open, sustainable ecosystem around public, royalty-free, and implementation-driven software platform standard that will ease the development of smart applications in multiple sectors, the sectors that I mentioned uh, before. So this is our, uh, this is our, um, our mission, the mission of Fiverr, and behind that mission we have an open source community, and as I will explain later, we have as well uh, a foundation. So the Fiverr Foundation uh, it's something that uh, was launched uh, February this year, and we are now starting to, um, to to gather more members of the Fiverr Foundation in order uh, to support this uh, Fiverr mission with the different open source projects that we are running. All of this um, was done, this creation of the community, with a huge effort. So uh, we devoted more, more than 7,000 uh, PMs to the development in five years. Um, but as I said, this is something that is not finishing right now. It's something that will continue for, 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 for more years. And of course, companies, we will continue investing in fiber, particularly in Telefonica. We consider fiber something very strategic because we don't want a proprietary Internet of Things. We want that the Internet of Things is built on standards and we think and an open source and open approaches. And we think that fiber uh, uh, is, 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 the, uh, is a key asset to, to, uh, to, to achieve that, that objective. And that's why we, we consider uh, Fiverr and some of the components of Fiverr that we particularly lead in Telefonica as strategic in our portfolio. And Fiverr not only delivers platform, not only delivers software, but also thanks to Fiverr uh, in Europe we have created an ecosystem of companies uh, actually uh, more that more than um, uh, 1,000 startups were created uh, using fiber technologies. Uh, these startups are creating products on top of the technologies that fiber uh, produce. And uh, this was done in the fiber acceleration program that some of you may have heard of which is uh, a program that the European Commission put in place to uh, be able to create this community of projects and entrepreneurs that make use of fiber across Europe. Um, so, but this is, this is more or less, well, a snapshot of the situation of the different startups and accelerations, acceleration projects that were created uh, in different countries in Europe. Some of these uh, companies uh, actually are, uh, I mean, are partnering with, with us, with Telefonica, with Orange, with uh, Atos, with other uh, big players, uh, because they have created applications, they have created products that are of interest to us to offer to our customers in smart cities, in smart agriculture, in different domains. So that's 
how uh, big companies creating uh, fiber we have enabled other smaller companies to create products and to innovate. And then we can benefit from this innovation. Because, because, why? Because we incorporate new products to our portfolio. But of course, these new products uh, are compatible with fiber. That means that, for instance, when we, uh, when we uh, um, uh, sell to a city uh, fiber, a fiber instance, it means that the city can benefit from these products that can work on top of fiber. So that's an, a very interesting um, uh, outcome of the acceleration program. But as well, the creation of this ecosystem of uh, technology companies in Europe is something good as well for the economy in the end. We have an example of an innovation that that, that uh, occurred because of the use of fiber. You have an example. An example of innovation. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I have we, we we have different examples, but uh, it was nice uh, to find. Um, and we were so showcasing with them in the Mobile World Congress uh, a company which has created uh, the capability of using fiber and the Internet of Things to be able to um, to do the management of the cattle, which is outside. So it's the free cattle. They manage using fiber technologies the cattle, uh, using a special collars, which is in the cows, uh, play, place in the neck of the cows. And then uh, they offer this information about not only the situation, but even if the animal is in good health condition or not. And this information is exposed through fiber and other uh, parties can consume the information. For instance, the veterinarians can get this information about uh, the, the, the state of the animals and the history state of the animals in order to uh, propose all the medicines or all the, the, the treatments that the animals have to, have to, to take. So this is an example of uh, innovation in fiber in the area of uh, agriculture and in the area of cattle management. But the nice thing is that instead of creating a close solution, these guys created the solution based on fiber. And thanks to that, you can create an ecosystem and other um, applications can consume this data and, and create a, a bigger thing, a, a thing more useful service? to the user. Yeah. So that's an example. I will show later in my presentation another example uh, of the benefit of using fiber in which we have created a car navigator for smart cities that um, exploits the smart city information in the surroundings to provide a more compelling um, experience while you are driving. So this is, these are examples of, of the benefit of fiber innovation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, fiber as well enable the creation of innovation hubs in Europe they provide local support to fiber. Actually, um, the ecosystem of fiber is being run, I mean, is being um, run in different countries, and particularly I will talk about the activities that have, are being conducted here in the Netherlands on fiber, and this is something that is not done by Telefonica, it's done by other companies. So uh, it's important to note that fiber is not Telefonica, is not Orange, the, 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 it's are big companies, but smaller companies are in lo, in locally in the countries. They are um, promoting fiber. They are making use of fiber. They are creating startups based on fiber. They are offering their services to the municipalities locally, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I mean, we our footprint is Spain, is Latin America, but in the rest of Europe. Other companies, and even some of them are smaller companies, small companies, they are starting um, getting advantage of fiber. So this is an important point to take into account. And as I said, this is something that we plan, our plan is to continue working in this line. And that's why our top managers in Orange, in Atos, Engineering and Telefonica, they sign the, uh, the, the, the creation of the Fiverr Foundation. Fiverr Foundation 
is like the Apache Mozilla Foundation. They are the, um, the legal instrument that is going to allow us to continue with the mission of Fiverr and to give in support to the open source community. But of course, um, this is the foundation. The projects will continue to run with, with the funding of the companies themselves, of the opportunities that the European Commission can offer in, the, in their funding program, in the fa funding programs, or in the national funding programs. But we have created this Fiverr Foundation to continue go guaranteeing that Fiverr um, it's, it's going towards the, the directions and the mission that we have decided before. So this was signed during the Mobile World Congress, was announced this year. And of course, there is uh, going to be an event uh, this um, next week in Vienna, where this is, this is being called the Fiverr Foundation, um, um, e the founders event, in which we are going to present to other parties the foundation, because this was initially signed by the four big, big players, which was Telefonica, Orange, Atos, and Engineering. And now we are going to present the foundation to other people in Europe to, uh, to raise their level of awareness of the foundation, and we expect that they, they start joining the foundation. So the foundation will be, uh, um, it can be joined on an uh, organization basis, but uh, as well uh, on an individual basis. Because if you are going to contribute to Fiverr, to the open source projects, to with code, uh, you're a developer, etc., you can join as well the Fiverr Foundation. As in other uh, communities, you will need to sign our code of conduct because we want uh, to, to have a minimum uh, respectful and uh, respect, uh, uh, I would say, loads in the, our code of conduct are in, in, the, in the foundation, of course. And so this is, uh, this is exciting. So Fiverr is continue to, to be there. Um, Fiverr uh, for us is strategic. And you will see, well, you have been talking about Fiverr for, for, uh, for 15 minutes, but uh, what is, uh, from a technical point of view, uh, what, what is? Well, was we, we have basically are the pieces that uh, properly combined um, allow you to create these smart applications, applications like the one I was describing uh, before. And these pieces, all of them are open source. They have uh, licenses which are, I would say, very friendly. So we have different licenses, but I think all of them are friendly to innovate. I mean, they are not, not licenses like GPL or things like that that could stop your innovation because uh, they, uh, they force you to release your code as well as open source and something like that. No, these are li nice licenses, uh, nice open source code, that you can install, compile, modify. Of course, there are um, the majority of licenses may that if, uh, um, say that, well, if you modify the component, please share the code with us. This is, this is more or less the, 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 the thing that uh, we, we, we ask people that use our technology. Please, if you make changes here and those changes you think are useful, Please share with us because it's nice for us to incorporate them to, to, the, to the components because we, we want to benefit from that. And of course, you can create uh, smart applications within very easily using the Fiverr components. And what, what Fiverr offers? Well, Fiverr has been offering to the entrepreneurs and particularly to the companies in the acceleration program, this Fiverr Lab. The Fiverr Lab is a cloud environment which allows you to instantiate virtual machines, to instantiate all the Fiverr components, to, uh, it allows you as well to have your big data uh, store and allows you to experiment with your software, with your application. It is not intended for production, but while you are in a pilot phase, you can use the Fiverr Lab to experiment, 
to test with your users to show your application to potential customers. And of course, you have the service of virtual machines. The images of the different fiber components can be instantiated very easily. And within the fiber lab is um, a, nice, a nice environment for you to, to play with. As well, the Fiber Lab incorporates, for instance, data, uh, open data from different cities that you can use, for instance, to experiment. So there are different data sets. For instance, you have all the information about the real-time position of buses in the city of Santander. So if you, need to, you want to build something uh, around mobility in cities, you can use that data as, as a testbed for your application even if your application is going to work in another city. But you can use the Fiber Lab resources to innovate as well. And what is the infrastructure behind the Fiber Lab? Well, currently we have more than 3,000 cores. Uh, all the memory you'd see here, uh, 2,600, more than that, open data set from, from cities. We deployed as well a uh, Fiber Lab node in Mexico, Brazil, Chile, in different, in different countries. And the good th uh, news is that here in the Netherlands, there is a Fiber Lab as well, as I, as I will explain later. And that Fiber Lab is being run by local companies here in the Netherlands. And that's, that's a way uh, how the ecosystem has expanded over uh, the different countries. And what kind of technologies uh, are provided by Fiber? Well, the, main the two main technologies that are provided by Fiber, I would say that are the two which are on the top, which are the capability of connecting your IoT devices to the cloud. Uh, this is done using the IDAS IoT agents. So they allow you to, uh, if you have devices, for instance, connected to a LoRa network, to Sigfox network, whatever, they allow you to um, obtain all the data and to publish all that data in the contest broker. So the contest broker in Fiber is the component that knows all the real-time information about what is happening, what is happening on the city, what is happening on your uh, on your agricultural uh, play and your agricultural exploitation, uh, whatever place. So, what is happening? What is the current temperature? What is the uh, the, the, the state of the traffic? Uh, what is the state of the parking spots? All that information is stored by the contest broker. Developers query that information through the contest broker, and they don't have to deal with the particularities of the Internet of Things network or devices that are there. So that is hidden by the IoT agents, okay? So these are the two main uh, pieces that allow you to create your smart applications. Around those two pieces, you have other layers. For instance, we have a security layer. So if you need to make your data only available to certain users, you can put um, components that allow you to, to, to track identity, permissions, all that kind of stuff. If you need to create um, data, which is, I would say, um, um, aggregated from um, uh, single data, uh, and you need to, to obtain, to infer new data from the real-time data which is coming, you have the, the con complex event processing, which allows you to do so. But, of course, you have as well components that allow you to all the historical data which is uh, passing through the contest broker to start um, moving that to the big data stores or to the CCAN stores in, in which they, um, it is a store um, in, in, the, in the historical uh, format because the contest broker has the latest value of the data. But if you need to keep a historical, uh, all, the his, all the history of the data, you can plug to the contest broker new components that allow you to move that data to the historical stores. That's, that's how the platform works. We have, uh, for the case, 
uh, for uh, real-time media streams, there is a component in Fiverr. So for instance, if you need to deal with sensors which are cameras, in that case, you have a stream, a video stream that you need to process. Um, this is uh, what is done by a component that is, um, performs very nicely, which is the, the, the Curento component that using the WebRTC uh, technology allows you to process the, um, the media streams. Uh, we have as well uh, for the front end, we have the capability of creating dashboards. So, because when you have all this IoT data, which has historical uh, track, you need to display that information. And that is done using the WireCloud platform. This is a, a mashup, uh, um, a, a widget, widget platform in which you can do a mashup of the different uh, widgets and you can display your information. You can uh, see where are your sensors, you can uh, display nice graphics, all that kind of thing. So this is a complete uh, offer and what is interesting to see is that these components have been developed by different parties. They are different projects that, form, uh, that are part of the Fiverr uh, initiative. But of course, all of them are open source. It's like in Apache. In Apache, there are many projects, different projects. And uh, in Fiverr, we have less projects, but um, independently run, uh, of course, Mm, we have this architecture board, we have this, we try to keep, to have some consistency on, on the, on the uh, portfolio of projects and all of them are targeted to smart applications, to the applications that exploit data from the Internet of Things and exploit big data. And as I said before, sorry, one of the uh, domains in which we are getting more traction in Fiverr is our smart cities. So um, uh, basically, uh, this is uh, because smart cities is, is, is a market is now emerging. Many, many, many countries want to, to, to say that some of their cities are smart cities. And because Fiverr uh, was a pioneer and, and was very, uh, all these components that we have are, uh, are meeting very well within the requirements for smart cities. And with one advantage, that um, the smart city uh, arena um, is now suffering the problem of the vertical solutions that only work in a specific city. So if you think about parking, smart parking applications, there are many but many of them only work in a particular city with a particular uh, parking system. You need, you, 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 you need to use that a, a specific application for a certain city, and if you go to another city, that application is no longer uh, working. So uh, it's suffering from, from that problem. So many vendors, they want to, to sell their particular solution with their cloud, et cetera, et cetera. But in the end, um, that solution only works for a city. Um, and probably th this problem is a problem for them as well because they have a, a restricted market. So Fiverr, uh, what proposed Fiverr for smart cities is something better, which is please uh, base your solution on, on the Fiverr platform. So if you are doing parking, nice. You can store the parking information in the contest broker. If you are doing um, waste management, no problem. You have a different kind of entity, which are the waste containers, but please store the information in the, in the contest broker. Why? Because um, the city, first, the city only needs one platform to store the things in the cloud. Secondly, um, Probably the parking sensors are very similar uh, in the connectivity to the uh, waste management sensor. So please use only uh, one connectivity uh, platform and, in, and software infrastructure to deal with this. Um, and in the end, there is another big advantage. As these APIs, these contest broker APIs are standard API, are the same API, so um, not only the, the, the application 
for the vertical can work using that data, but other applications can use the, the data and benefit from that. So because maybe you have one application for waste management, but then you need another application that use the waste management data for, for another smart behavior. And, and what happens if, if the solution is vertical and close, th there, is, there is no ecosystem in the smart city. And we want that smart cities are innovation ecosystems in the end. So here uh, I have, there is a nice video that I would like you to, I would invite you to see, to watch at, the, at our booth in which we uh, demonstrate, uh, in which we explain um, what, what the, the, where, we are, where we would like to go with the smart cities in, in Fiverr. And, and what, what is explained in the video is that um, we, we, we've been working with four different cities uh, during uh, this year and we presented this, this showcase in the Mobile World Congress. Um, in the cities where, um, in Spain, Santander, and Seville, in um, Belgium, Antwerp, um, in, um, in Portugal, the city of Porto. And uh, all the four cities um, publish the real-time information to the contest broker uh, about parking, so on-street and off-street parkings, and all the information we have to do with air quality. So the um, basically um, what, are, what are the uh, pollution levels in the cities. And the four cities have their own infrastructure, so it, each city owns its infrastructure, but they publish the information to the contest broker using the same data models. So that means that um, I can query the information for Santander in the same way that the information in Antwerp, because the information is in, in, in the contest broker, the APIs are the same, and the data models are the same. And thanks to this approach, we have built a car navigator that exploits the information from the different cities. And this car navigator works in the different cities. And uh, you, you install the application in your mobile phone or even you, in the future that could be installed in your car. And it could work in different cities. And you could find parking spots in the different cities uh, without installing different applications. And the application is, uh, is quite nice because um, basically you plan a route in the city and it, it guides you to the right parking spot. It could be on street, could be off street. And, um, and as well, it's informing you real time of the air pollution levels. So it says if you are entering into a high pollution area, it, it says you are entering high pollution Please try avoid this area or try to find a parking not in downtown, whatever. So that kind of optimization. Can and I ask you something, Jose? Yeah. How come the municipalities pick Fireware as the platform and not um, maybe a similar platform? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and and because, uh, because Fireware intends to, to be uh, because Fiverr is open platform, so avoids vendor locking, and of course um, uh, the software is open source, so they can evolve better their uh, their their infrastructure. But of course, um, they, they they the the nice thing about Fiverr, as I said, is is that it enables a single platform for all the different verticals in the city. Yes, but it only works if many, many muni municipalities collaborate. So it's hard to, right, find the first starting cities and then build on to the next ones. So you have to have a starting yeah. point for your critical mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a So something happened there. I yeah, guess. that's a good question. That, that, um, that uh, puts ahead some of my slides, but uh, I would like to, to, to go to say that... Um, what happened 
is that we were able to set up uh, an initiative called Open and Agile Smart Cities. It started with only 31 cities, but now it's 89, um, 89 cities from 19 countries that um, they signed so they, 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 they show fiber, they study, and they say, well, I like this, but of course, um, I, I mean, um, um, the municipalities, they, 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 um, at a, a given moment, they don't have the money to start their project. So, so what, they, what, what, what they did this, is that they signed they sign, um, an agreement to join the OAS initiative and they say, I intend to implement fiber in my city. And because I don't want to do that alone, I signed the uh, manifesto of uh, fiber uh, of the OAS uh, initiative, which says a smart city is going to be based on fiber APIs, it's going to be based on fiber data models, the, the, the way of modeling information. And what is interesting as well is that when, when a city joins the initiative, it cannot be a single city in each country. It has to be more than one because we want to stimulate collaboration. We want to create the ecosystem. We want to create the market. And this is good, good for entrepreneurs because um, more and more and more cities are adopting fiber. So more and more possibilities, a bigger market is right now here for their solutions. So, um, of course, um, nine, 90 cities and majority of them has not started um, a, a project, but they have pilots. And these pilots will allow them to validate it if, if fiber is what they are really looking for. So this is uh, a step-by-step -step approach. Uh, of course, we have cities, we have four or five cities that I would say that they are the the forefront runners, which are, um, we have more advanced solutions, and we think that we can, um, we can, um, of course, the, the, the other cities can learn the experiences from the forefront runners. So this is, this is the, the, the approach. Um, so going a bit back, just <laughs> um, to, to, um, to, to uh, summarize the approach in fiber. The, the most important thing is these, these are these NGSI standard APIs. So these are the APIs that allow the developer of the application to consume the real-time information which comes from the city. And the information could come from different sources. Uh, the sensors can be even data generated by users. It can be the buses. It can be whatever. But the nice thing is that all this universe of information is consumed northbound by developers using these NGSI APIs. The nice thing is that the NGSI APIs, which uh, were based initially on the OMA specifications, but uh, of course technology evolves, and we, we have now a release candidate of a new version of the NGSI APIs, which are even um, much easier to be used by developers. Uh, they are RESTful APIs, and uh, we have workshops today in which we explain them. Um, and we are, they are more powerful because uh, we have extended the, the, the geographical uh, queries to, with more cap capabilities. So we think that, um, that now the, the platform for developers is, is much easier to be used. And um, we as well have some experimentation with harmonizing all the data models with these different cities. So we have harmonized data models for weather information, for air quality information, for the parking spots. So we are, of course, sharing all these um, all these experiences uh, with, with um, new cities. So for instance, in the city of Utrecht, uh, they are starting to publish weather information and we are uh, please uh, harmonize to this data model because if we have more and more and more cities supporting the same thing, this is going to be the standard. Yeah. So we, we, are, uh, we are doing what we call standardizing bottom-up. Is 
um, taking all the feedback, all the input, then we, 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 are, we plan to, to do the, the formal standard. But we, we want first to, to be a de facto standard. Okay. Will, will you take another question yeah. from the audience? Yeah. Well, uh, do you also comply to the European Inspire model? For yeah, that's a good question. Um, actually, uh, it's something which is in our roadmap to, um, um, to, to, to have um, an alignment, uh, proper alignment with the, with the, I mean, with the Inspire. We are, we are aware. So our data models uh, right now um, are, I would say, in beta stage. I mean, we, we are um, um, validating them with different communities. But of course, Inspire is something which is in our radar. Uh, despite is something, some of the parts of, the, of, of Inspire are still in development. But of course, uh, we plan, we plan to, to, uh, to align at least at the, at the meta model level with, with Inspire. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So this is um, this is how it works. The API. It's important to know that the API not only allows you to consume the information or to provide information, but to subscribe to the information. So when there is a change in some in in, in, in an attribute. So for instance, if the temperature is uh, greater than uh, 20 degrees, please tell me. So you can subscribe to the information. So the model of, of Fiverr is that the information can be published by the data provider, can be consumed by the data consumer, but you can subscribe to the changes in the information and then be notified and then do actions in reaction to that. Actually, this notification aspect is very interesting because it allows you to plug new components to, to the Fiverr platform. So, and that's how actually works um, some of the historical stores that we have. The historical uh, store is um, created thanks that we have components that listen to the changes and generate all the history of the information. And as I said before, uh, using this, you can create smart city applications using the different other, other uh, firewire components. And well, this is a slide I was, I was, um, I was um, showing before, and this is the prototype uh, navigator which was built using here maps technologies. And this is uh, an example in the city of Santander with the c different areas, parking, parking spots. So the, these polygons are showing parking spots in the street, uh, so the driver can know where he can, where he can park. And uh, all this information in the city of Santander is coming from ground sensors in the parking areas. So the sensor in the ground is notifying all the, all the, all the data. There can be different sources for information in parking. So in the city of Seville, we did some prototyping with, um, in some uh, parkings, open parkings with cameras. So the cameras are able to report um, when in, in certain areas there, are, there, is, there are free parking spots, there are other approaches in other cities in which the uh, par meters they provide the information. So, but the nice thing is that from Can the you tell me which ones, what what's actually been being measured to to find if a parking spot is vacant. Yeah, uh, what is measured in terms of of of, of uh, yeah. how do you sensor the vehicle. Ah, yeah, yeah. So there is a ground. Sometimes there are ground sensors. So if the car parks, the sensor says on off. Okay. Uh, sometimes are the parameters. So if the parameter um, is sending information about how many tickets are sold. So uh, you can get an estimation of the uh, using the, the amount of time of the tickets yeah. and, and the street and you can do an estimation, yeah. and sometimes there are cameras that are, they are able to detect the, the, the cars and then report. Okay. But the nice thing is that from the point of view of the developer of this application, the information, the parking information, they, he don't care about, uh, he doesn't care about what is the data source that is producing the parking information. 
this is the, the nice thing, and that's why it can work in different, in different cities. And you can see on the right-hand side all the air quality information, all the weather information, which is captured from um, using the fiber APIs as well and comes from the national agencies. So, um, and using the fiber interfaces, you can get the information from the Spanish agency, from the Portugal agency, and even we created some uh, prototype in which you can get all the alarms from uh, Meteo Alarm, which is the European agency for uh, weather alarms. So you can query the fiber platform and say, well, there is a, an, 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 um, some kind of alarm in this, in this area, etc., etc. We did it, which is nice to, th to see here about this prototype, is the, the amount of logos, because we didn't create this alone. We work it with the municipalities, because, of course, they needed to open um, uh, their sensor networks, uh, they needed to, to publish all the, all the data and to make the, it available to us through fiber. But we work it as well with um, um, small companies, for instance, you beware in Porto, Portugal, which provide as well um, data from their platforms. So, uh, but all of them agreed on, 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 um, on feeding fiber to, with, with data and enable creating uh, this car navigator uh, with us. Uh, so here our role was more saying, well, um, please come together we are going to show this concept because it's very important to, to show the potential for, for fiber and, and because of what you were saying before, that to show cities that this can work. So it was nice to develop the, the navigator. So I, I developed it um, myself together with my colleague uh, Francisco. So it was fun to do it. Um, so this is uh, the end of the update of Fiverr, but I'm going to give you a small update uh, on the Fiverr activities in the Netherlands, because our colleagues, which are seated over there, they share what they are doing. And actually, uh, I have came here to talk to them about how to cooperate and to do uh, showcases together and work together, uh, and of course, to um, uh, to make them uh, to, to aware of, of what we are doing at global level in fiber. So in the Netherlands, there is uh, an instance of the fiber lab. Um, it's been launched very, very recently and um, co-financed by the province of here of Utrecht. And these are the partners, the different partners who are uh, working to make a success the fiber lab in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, as you see, these are companies, local companies, etc., etc. So, how fiber is expanding more than. And uh, well, you have the website, you have uh, information uh, in order to know more about about the initiative. Um, and um, these guys um, from the Netherlands are running different uh, projects that they share they share with me. Um, nice thing to say is that we are looking to solutions for these problems and there is a hackathon tomorrow uh, which starts tomorrow in which uh, we are looking for solutions to the problems that uh, are found here in, in the city of Utrecht and other nearby cities problems about mobility about uh, having a better environment, green environment, about managing parks, about managing waste, different, uh, different initiatives that uh, they are uh, being uh, conducted with the municipalities here in, in, in Utrecht and in, in the Netherlands in general. And um, this is very, very interesting. And we invite to participate in the people in the in the world, in the in the hackathon uh, that will be 24 hours from tomorrow at uh, 19 p.m. till Saturday 19 p.m. Do people know where to find you? Yeah. Where uh, is it? Uh, the the hackathon. Yes. 
I think will be in the digital entertainment uh, place. But in any case, uh, we can give information at the Fiverr booth. It will be tomorrow, so in order to know more. But uh, the idea is to build things using the Fiverr technologies that could apply here to the problems that Utrecht is facing yeah. in, the, in the city and, yeah. and using the, the, the smart city approach to solve those problems. Yeah, with the many constructions that are going on, yes. no need to say it serves a purpose. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. And um, we could use real-time data. Uh, there is a deployment of the LoRa network in the city of Utrecht. So devices can be connected to the, to the network. These devices are starting to uh, publish data over a contest broker, which is in the Fiber Lab uh, node in the Netherlands. And um, we have open data many open data sets as well that can be used in the, in the hackathon. So many, many different stuff that, that we invite you to, to use. That sounds great. Okay. We have five more minutes. Would you take some Q&A? Yes, of course. Yeah. Are there any questions from the, from the audience? Questions, more questions. Yeah, okay. I know in the city of Amsterdam, there was data collected by how many public bathrooms there were and how long the lines were if in front of those bathrooms. I was really very pleased with that service. So <laughs> there was open data as well. Yeah. yeah? Questions? Other questions? Yeah. Oh, I'll be with you first. If you are not uh, an entrepreneur, yeah. Um, you want uh, work with uh, Fiber? Fiber. Uh, what is the the solution? Or, or yeah, uh, I mean, I mean Fiber is open source, mm -hmm. so um, it's as easy as um, we have a, a website which is called developer.fiber.org, in which you will find um, all the tutorials uh, to start working with. But if you want, for instance, to uh, do a quick start with the contest broker. Um, y there is um, an instance with, uh, with Santander's uh, another city's data in our Fiber Lab. You need to register in the Fiber Lab and you can use that data. And uh, there is another way you can easily play with the, with the technology, which is um, you, you know the Docker, Docker technology. So there are Docker containers for the different components. So you can instantiate very easily and start playing with the APIs. There is as well a tutorial application that uh, is referenced from developers.fiber.org that you can use as well. So you provide to customers or clients uh, the possibility uh, to, to create a virtual machine? Or yeah, 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 yeah. You can instantiate the software. Uh, uh, and you can... Uh, access to cloud and uh, and bring the data yeah. To, to the cloud. yeah 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 you have the two options you can go to our cloud you can register you can instantiate yourself or you can go to your laptop install docker run the component do whatever you want with it so it's pretty flexible okay, you don't need okay. to run anything uh, it, it's very useful yeah you have ambitions you have ideas maybe yeah Build on the platform, okay. I saw one more question over there. Uh, who's owner of the data and uh, who's owner of the data? Uh -huh. and, and when applications work on the data, new information uh, is uh, going to be, who's generated, who's then owner of the data? Yeah, so that's a good part. question. Um, so, um, actually, I mean, the, the data in, in, the, in the most simple form is that data is owned by the, by the municipality and it allows you to use, to use the data in your application. This is the most simple case, but there can be cases in which um, uh, the data, you need to pay for the data, could be the case if you want to create the application, or even the data is private, the, the city only allows certain applications to get access to the data. Is that depends on, 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 on how 
the project is set up. Of course, uh, it's, uh, we think it's better to let the, date, the real time data open because more applications can benefit from that and the citizens will benefit in the end from that. If more data is created, then probably you would need to see to say this data has been derived or has been inferred from this source. And you then need to mention the municipality or the producer or whatever. And, but uh, could depend, could depend. Even uh, we see a scenarios in which you could pay as a user or as a developer for the data, but who knows? Yeah, okay. Klappa? <laughs> That will conclude your presentation by uh, Jose. I thought it was uh, very insightful on mm -hmm. uh, Fireware. Thank you so much for uh, attending this uh, presentation. And, um, well, please join Jose in a hackathon, right? Find more yeah, solutions Yeah, or tomorrow. in the Fireware booth, okay. et cetera. I have a small present for you. In case you want to stay in the, on the Camposeros campsite. Yeah, you okay. can. This okay. will be your own tent. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you very you so much. much. Thank you. Okay, thanks.